It's a few advents ago that I found this poetry collection, A Deed to the Light, by Jean Murray Walker. I'd never heard of her, but uh, I was drawn by the title. And inside, I found a piece that has worked its way back into my soul each advent since I encountered it, and I want to share it this morning. It's simply titled, The Portrait of the Virgin Who Said No to the Angel. This is the one that never gets painted. She looked up from baking that morning, hearing his feathers settle and his voice scatter like gold coins on the floor. He told her his forehead sweaty from the long trip. Me, she breathed, oh sure. But after he walked away, she couldn't forget his look, the strange way his feet rang like horseshoes on the stones. What she'd been wanting before he interrupted was not the Bach Magnificat, I can tell you, not stained glass, nothing risky. She just wanted to keep her good name. Small as she was, how could she keep in her heart those centuries of praise? But I praise her for wanting a decent wedding with napkins folded like hats and good Italian wine. I praise her name, Lenora. I praise the way she would practice carefully making the L like a little porch where she could imagine standing to throw a red ball to some child she loved. I praise the way year by year she let herself see who that visitor really was. Think of her, collecting belief slowly the way a bird builds her nest in an olive tree. Then finally, how one year after the leaves fell, she was an old woman looking out at the truth outlined against the salmon sky, knowing that it was true. For not despising her own caution, I praise her. For never feeling envy. And for the way once she stepped past her fear to hand a cup of water to a thirsty carpenter fainting by her door. In every room of the gallery, I think I see her picture. Is it heresy during the season of Advent to wonder if just possibly Mary was not the first woman to be asked to carry the Christ child? Because that is a big ask of someone, especially a young person. Are you willing to risk, possibly ruin your reputation? Are you willing to put your future and all you have planned on hold? Are you willing to possibly risk your very life so that you can be part of the next thing that God is doing? Those are big questions. So for me, it's not out of the realm of possibility that maybe a few other young ladies were asked and they turned the request down. And maybe that's why this piece of poetry speaks to me so powerfully. It tells us of a God who asks, not a God who demands. It tells us of a God who has intense respect for our decisions. It tells us of a God who never gives up on God's plan. And it tells us of a God who never gives up on us. And, and for me, it tells me of someone that I can relate to because if we're honest, we can all relate to Lenora from the poem, it's Mary that we don't quite understand. Because there have been times in my life where I felt that God was asking something big of me. Griff, you need to listen to that search committee from the small town that you've never heard of. Griff, the little boy you met in Nicaragua in the orphanage, he's supposed to be part of your family. Griff, this is the sermon that I need preached this week, even if it seems heretical. Griff, I need you to befriend that person who drives you absolutely crazy and you can't stand. And my reaction time and time and time again has been no. No, God, I have plans. I want to preach in a big steeple church where people know my name and that small town church doesn't fit in the plans that I've put together. 
God, our house is already pretty full right now, and I don't know that I have the funds or the patience to bring another child into it. God, preaching that sermon, preaching this sermon, might get me in trouble with certain members of the congregation. God, I can't befriend that person. She's too difficult, and that asks too much of me. This morning, if we can be honest, we can all say that we know and we understand Lenora. We know the virgin who said no because of our own no. No, God, I don't want to give you 10% of my income. I don't want to give you any of my income. I have better ways how to handle my money than you do. No, God, I'm not ready to forgive and reconcile yet. I'm still after revenge. No, God, I don't really want to commit all to church. My time is too valuable to get involved in that community. No, God, I really don't want to get involved in the homeless ministry because that's messy and that's not something that I can fix. No, God, I don't want to give money to Advent Conspiracy. What does a washer and a dryer really do anyway? And I have gifts to buy. No, God, I don't want to take a stand for that issue even though I truly believe it, but it might make other people uncomfortable. No, God, I don't want to write, I don't want to paint, I don't want to sing, I don't want to act, because those are not jobs that pay the bill and there's no security. I'll follow those callings later in life. We all understand Lenora because each of us has said no to God. I mean, we have things planned. We have an order to things. There's a direction. There's a structure for us. We know what belongs and what doesn't belong in our life, and we know how we're going to get to where we want to go. We want God to ask something of us that's going to further our plans, that will enhance our future. We want God to give us more secure bank accounts. We want God to ask us to do something that will make us more likable, that fits into the narrative we've worked so hard to build. And if God would ask that of us, well then certainly we would raise our hands and say, let it be. But God, don't ask something too big. Don't ask something too risky. Don't ask something that might break my heart. Don't ask something unless it comes with a pain-free promise. Don't ask something that might get me in trouble. It shows you how short-sighted we really are. How blind we are to the ways of the Lord. How closed our eyes are during this season of vigil. And it shows you how often we mistake temporary meaning and satisfaction for true meaning and satisfaction. I've been reading a brilliant new book, The Book of Joy. It's an extended conversation between His Holiness the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and it's an excellent book that is worth all of our time. The book begins with a simple question. In our world today, where we have so very much, where's the joy? And why are we not a more joyous people? And it's largely because we have confused joy with happiness. In the words of Desmond Tutu, it's wonderful to discover that what we want is not actually happiness. That's not actually what I speak of. I speak of joy. Joy subsumes happiness. Joy is the far greater thing. Think of a mother who's about to give birth. Almost all of us want to escape the pain. And mothers know that they are going to have pain. The great pain of giving birth. But they accept it. And even after the most painful labor, once the baby is out, you can't actually measure the woman's joy. It's one of those incredible things that joy comes from suffering. Over and over and over in the book, these two spiritual masters teach us that joy is not pain-free. In fact, it's often just the opposite. Joy is often found in the process of pain because the things that matter most in life are rarely free. But they are so worth the cost that we pay. Joy comes from being like Mother Mary and saying, let it be. Even when that scares us to death, 
even when it doesn't fit into our plans, even when it means taking a huge risk, even when it calls for us to put something on the line. Joy is Mary, thinking through her decision and knowing that this decision will cause people to talk about her. It might even cause people to want to stone her. It will likely cause Joseph to leave her and her family to desert her. This role will give her a lesser role in society and it will affect everything about her future. And even with all of that, still saying, yes. It's knowing all of that and saying yes to a bold, adventurous obedience with Jesus Christ. Joy is Mary loudly singing a song about God overthrowing the social order of the day and the religious order of the land. It's a song about feeding the hungry where the wealthy walk away empty-handed. It's a song about a sword that will one day pierce her own soul. Joy is Mary believing that she can bring a king into this world. Joy is Mary knowing that God favors her. Think about that. Joy is knowing that God favors you and that God favors me. And joy is Mary knowing that God wanted her to play a really big role in the story of love coming to earth. Joy is trust in God. Joy is taking the risk of something big for something good. It's saying yes to God's big risk. Joy is the result of surrender and obedience. Joy is, let it be. It's Desmond Tutu again. Discovering more joy does not save us from hardship and heartbreak. In fact, we may cry more easily, but we will laugh more easily too. Perhaps joy is just being more alive. As we discover more joy, we can face suffering in a way that ennobles rather than embitters. We can have hardship without becoming hard, and we can have heartbreak without becoming broken. Joy is found in the contentment of being part of something big, and joy is knowing that you've played a role in something that matters. And we need to understand that. Because in our world today, where hate and racism and misogyny and power and ego have once again become the norm, and we are seeing them over and over and over again. In a world that seems to be trying to regress backwards instead of progress forward, here is what I believe with all of my heart. God is asking something big of us as individuals and as a church. And the salvation of this world and the salvation of our children and our grandchildren and our own salvation depends on us saying, let it be. And with that will come true joy. Joy that knows the light because it's been through the dark. Joy that can laugh fully because it's also wept fully. Joy that has danced with risk and has found life in that dance. Joy when we say, yes, let it be, let me be part of your story instead of, no, this doesn't fit with my narrative right now. If you want to see joy, Look to the woman boldly singing her song of revolution because she is part of God's story. And joy is the angels dancing and singing around her, Gloria. May our joy begin with the words, Let it be. Amen and amen.